All right, our first presentation today will be Catherine, and she'll be talking about the healthy, the health benefits of a ketogenic diet and the role of animal fats in the success of the diet. Catherine. Right, like he said, today I'm going to cover the topic of the health benefits of a ketogenic diet and the important role that animal fats play in the success of the diet. So a quick overview about some of the things I'm going to cover today. I'm going to talk about what exactly is a ketogenic diet and I wanted to say what nutritional ketosis is because I'm going to refer to that a couple of times today. The impact a ketogenic diet has on multiple diseases. The important role of animal fat, some disadvantages, and I wanted to quickly cover why this is important to me. So what exactly is a ketogenic diet? A ketogenic diet is a diet that is high in fat, moderate in protein, and low in carbohydrates. So when comparing it to a traditional diet that is higher in carbs, you are dramatically decreasing the amount of carbs that you are consuming. When you do that, you actually switch to where you're increasing your caloric intake of fat to about 75% of your daily calories. So your body switches from running on glucose to running on fat. And when that happens, you enter this state of nutritional ketosis. We're gonna talk about the metabolic differences between high carb and high fat diets. So higher carb diets, your body is running on glucose as its main source of fuel or energy. And high fat diets, you, your body's running on this energy called ketones that are produced in the liver. I kind of wanted to do a quick run through of the difference between the traditional higher carb diet and the higher fat keto diet. So say for a traditional diet, you eat bread. When you eat that bread, the glucose levels in your body rise. Because of that glucose increase, your pancreas secretes insulin. Insulin acts as a transport to get that glucose into the cells where they can be used for energy. And so for higher fat, say you eat an avocado, your insulin is not spiked. So lipase, which is an enzyme that helps to break down fat, it breaks down fatty acids and those fatty acids travel down to the liver. In the liver, it goes through a process called ketogenesis and through that process, ketones are created and entered into the bloodstream and that is where you get your energy from. Today I'm going to talk about using ketosis as a healing diet. So there is a lot of research being done, but just a couple of the places where it's being seen beneficial is for diabetes, cancer, obesity, epilepsy, as well as neurological and metabolic disorders and there's many more. We're gonna first talk about epilepsy. So in the late 1920s was actually when the ketogenic diet came into play. There's a doctor trying to figure out an effective treatment for um, epilepsy in young children. He found that when he cut the carbs out of these kids' diets, he was able to substantially decrease those hard to control seizures. And in some states, completely eradicated them. We're not exactly sure what causes that, but we believe that when this body, or when your body is in the state of ketosis, the pH is altered, causing some of the chemical reactions in the brain to either not happen or to happen. They're not exactly sure what change causes this decrease in seizures. So I found this study by Lori Ellis. She originally put 150 epileptic patients on the ketogenic diet. So a year later, 83 were still on it. And what was super fascinating to me was of those 83, 41 were able to see at least a 90% 
great or greater reduction in seizures, which is absolutely incredible, especially for those that suffer with a seizure disorder. Next is obesity. Obesity is a worldwide epidemic. We're just getting more obese and the percentages are increasing every single year. It's been proven that the ketogenic diet can be very effective for weight loss. Obesity can lead to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and hypertension, all of which are not very good. So this is a study, it was a 24 week study, where they put obese patients on a ketogenic diet. So across the board in every aspect, blood and weight, every number got better. So you can see BMI dramatically decreased as well as the total blood cholesterol. The HDL levels increased, but HDL is the good cholesterol that helps to shuttle the bad cholesterol out of the body. Triglycerides decreased, and triglycerides are super, uh, they play into the part of like heart attacks, heart disease, and strokes. So decreasing those was quite a big benefit. Additionally, the blood glucose levels um, decreased as well. So across the board, seeing every single number drop was quite a big uh, factor in this study. And lastly, we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. So when you have diabetes, your main issue is insulin resistance, which is the impaired ability of your muscle cells to absorb glucose. So when they can't absorb this glucose is when diabetics have high blood sugar, which can lead to damage within the body and blood vessels. So in another study, just like the obesity study, they did a 16 week study where they put type two diabetics through a ketogenic diet as well. And once again, across the board, every single number was lower. And right now, doctors are saying it's a valuable tool in managing diabetes. And this little graph, um, I found it online. And by 2035, there is supposed to be a 55% increase in diabetes just because we can't get this obesity problem under control. And now, since I'm an animal science major, I do need to relate this back to animal science. So with 75% of my diet coming from fat, animal fat is a big part of my diet. For years and years, and you can still see it to this day, you would think, or you're being told that red meat can cause heart disease, and that is entirely not true. Fatty acids can, or fatty acids provide long-term sustainable energy, while glucose quickly runs through your body and only gives you a quick burst of energy. There is omega-3s found in grass-fed meat and eggs, which are very important in your diet. And one big thing that I found was that there is no evidence that animal fats or an excess consumption of animal fats are going to cause problems. However, there's some vegetable fats when consumed in excess can be detrimental to your health. And through my research, I found these really cool graphs that I wanted to include. So in the 19, or in the late 1970s was when they released the low fat health guidelines, basically telling us that fat was bad. And right after that was when all of the obesity percentages for each age group start rising. So as we cut out that fat and you know led to more processed foods where they were taking the fat out of this, you can see that it was definitely played a part in the rise of obesity. Additionally, this was a study done in Europe where they grouped the countries into the ones that had or ate more saturated fat and the ones that ate less saturated fat. And what they found was the people or the countries that ate more animal fat had less instances of heart disease. Basically, like uh, 
basically different than what all the science says should happen. And lastly, while ketogenic diets can be great, they aren't for everyone. They require a lot of willpower and perseverance. It is a complete lifestyle change and um, you can't just hop on it one day and fall off. It's, you have to completely change your life. Um, you have to plan ahead. It's not something where you can just go out and know there's going to be something to eat if you go to a party or an event because there's sugar in everything. Um, another thing, there is a period of adaption when your body is switching from running on sugar to running on fat. And that period of adaption is called the keto flu, is what a lot of people refer to it as. And your body usually have brain fog and kind of lethargic feeling, but that's just your body having to basically change the way it acts. And it usually lasts from three to 10 days, but if you supplement with enough electrolytes, you usually don't feel that at all. And lastly, it is not recommended for athletes who have quick short bursts of energy, such as sprinters. So in conclusion, I think the future of ketogenic diets is going to be vast. There is a lot of research beginning to happen, and because we're understanding just how beneficial the ketogenic diets can be. And because it's been drilled into our heads for so long, that fat makes us fat, scientists are really having to work and show that that is not entirely true. And then I just wanted to point out like why this is important to me. This is an animal science class and I'm doing something more diet based. And um, the ketogenic diet is super important to me because it changed my life because I suffer with a couple of diseases and it has helped me. Additionally, it saved my dad's life before he had a triple bypass heart surgery. So it's very near and dear to my heart. And this is actually my logo. I've built like a social media following of like over 110,000 people where I am preaching this platform every day and trying to spread the benefits and health benefits of the ketogenic diet. Thank you. Questions for Catherine. So what is like an average meal that you would eat for like this diet? So like a lot of the time I would that with a lot of meat probably think I'm crazy, but I do like eggs cooked in um, butter with bacon, so it's all fat. And I lost, the whenever I first started it, I lost 20 pounds in two months doing absolutely nothing, just working out. I'd come home from studying abroad, I was kind of angry at myself, I wasn't feeling well, and my dad convinced me to try it, and I dropped 20 pounds, literally just changing the way I eat. So that one graph where it's like um, back in the 70s when they started to introduce the low-fat guidelines, uh -huh. do you think that rise in obesity could also be part of um, fast food chains? Because I know like in the 70s on, it's uh -huh. like when fast food. Really yeah, I mean, hit. there's a lot of factors that could go into that. Mm -hmm. There's definitely could be part of that. Because at that point was when a lot of processed foods and fast foods started becoming major players in the food industry. So you talked about type 2 diabetes. Does it uh, have any effects for people that have type 1 diabetes? So type 1 diabetics are, um, they usually don't recommend it for type 1 diabetics because they can enter a state of ketoacidosis where these ketones build up in the body and it can lead to death. Because of the way they can't process insulin, I'm not 100% sure not incredibly familiar with the type 1 diabetes, but because of the ketoacidosis risk of their bodies building up those ketones, it is not usually recommended for type 1 diabetics. What kind of carbohydrates do you eat? Um, broccoli. Um, I don't eat fruit. Um, oh, that would be the hardest thing. Yeah, I, like, I guess I eat berries. Every once in a while I do have like a handful of blueberries, but they're very carb dense and so I've excluded them from my diet. But really I don't eat many carbs. They come, I guess you could say my only carbs come from like the fibrous vegetables I eat. Okay. 
what is the, I guess, the cost effectiveness? Is it more expensive or less expensive? It's hard to say because, I mean, I eat a lot of natural, like, meats and fish and butter and eggs. And, I mean, you could probably spend the same amount on a meal at Burger King. But whenever, like, my grocery bills, like, at home versus, like, where I buy my food, it's about the same for my family who doesn't do the lifestyle as opposed to me. So there isn't much of a difference. Um, I was just wondering, you said that um, to avoid or try to avoid the keto flow mm -hmm. um, you increase electrolytes. electrolytes. How does that help, I guess? So like whenever your body is going to this state of ketosis, you're basically peeing out all the salt in your body. And whenever you're deep depleting those electrolytes, you just start to feel bad. So, I mean, I salt everything, like, liberally. I drink um, electrolyte drinks. Um, and so it's always, it's super important, even when I'm, like, adapted, is what they call it when you're keto adapted, that I replenish my electrolytes every day. So since you're, like, increasing the saturated fat or whatever, and that mm -hmm. helps with, like, all of your fats, all your vitamins, how did you change, like, your vitamin intake? Like, do you pay more attention to it since those are ones that you can, like, over... Yeah, um, well, like, I supplement with, like, magnesium and, um, vitamin D and uh, there's a couple, what are there, I think potassium, I take a pill. Just, there's a couple of pills that I've read up on that it's beneficial to supplement on, but usually there isn't anything I'm lacking. I just supplement because I feel like it, and I feel like it might help me. Yeah. How hard is it to like go to a restaurant then with this kind of diet? It's actually relatively easy. Like basically anywhere serves like a burger, and I just get it without a bun. Um, like I had Mexican food last night. I just got fajitas and vegetables without the tortillas or rice and beans. Um, usually anywhere you go, it's pretty easy to adjust your life or adjust the meal. Sometimes you're super annoying and they hate you, but it's pretty easy to make that adjustment that will suit your diet. There are a lot of diets that promote the high intake of fats and protein and low intake of carbohydrates like the Atkins diet and mm -hmm. the paleo diet. But for the keto diet, I'm trying to remember the, the limit of intake of carbohydrates is quite low, right? How much, how many, how many grams of carbohydrate can you eat a day to be considered in the keto diet? So there's like a range. Usually they say to keep it under 50 total net carbs, but I stay under 20 grams of carbs. So I stay very low in carbohydrates. But there's different, because there's low carb diets, there's ketogenic diets, there's Atkins diets. There's a lot of different variations and they all have kind of different, um, I guess, like minimum or maximum range of carbohydrates. But um, technically, usually they're all under 50 grams. 50 grams a day. Mm -hmm. And when you, say, when you talk about the benefits of the keto diet, for instance, in obesity or some other metabolic alterations, do you think that, or even let's say in general people that just want to control their body weight, do you think the keto diet is a strategy that should be implemented for a specific length of time or do you think people should, could have health could you know be healthy of have, implementing keto diet you know for their whole lives i mean there's people who do it as a quick weight loss tool because do, whenever you go on it you really do lose weight very quickly and um but a lot of the times if you come off of it, you do gain a little bit of that back just by changing your eating habits. Um, but for me, I see it as like a long-term sustainable lifestyle. So I just make it fit for me, I guess you could say. Any other questions? Thank you.